Hello, my name is Daniel Etim Efiong. I'm an actor and a filmmaker. This is Folio Culture. God, put an angel on earth just for you. Just for you could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. Well, I have a background in chemical engineering. I studied uh, yeah, chemical engineering and worked in the oil and gas sector as a process engineer. Um, but my passion has always been in entertainment. And uh, I guess one day I, did, I, I decided to uh, quit my job and plunge myself into the world of entertainment. And um, I got my first real big acting gig on in Danny's um, Giddy Up as the character for Larry. Well, it wasn't an easy journey, uh, quitting engineering for entertainment for film. I always acted in like church drama and um, school plays and things, but I was a science student. Um, so I kind of figured out that, you know, when all of this is done, I'll be doing entertainment because that's what I'm passionate about. But, you know, Nigeria now and everything that comes with, you know, the hustle of living in this country, um, I was put under pressure to go further and study engineering and work as an engineer. But it wasn't bringing me fulfillment. So um, I was doing acting on the side, but I was working as an engineer. You know, I'd go shoot films and over the weekend or at night and I'll come to work with bloodshot eyes and everything. So. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. I, I knew I was going to get better pay, you know, from engineering at the time. And, you know, um, I, it was enticing to work as an engineer because it was stable, the pay was good, but I wasn't happy. So one day, I didn't tell family members because I had learned, you know, not to tell certain people certain things. So I didn't tell family members. I just, you know, fasted and prayed and then typed my resignation letter, walked up to the um, the HR department and tendered the resignation letter. My walk from the HR department back to my chair, back to my uh, uh, my work uh, post was perhaps the longest journey of my life, but I walked all the way back to my seat and boom, there it was, an invitation to, um, to come interview for a job position at Indani TV as a content producer. You know, that was my first real gig after engineering, my first real gig, gig in, in entertainment. But before then, I was acting on the side and I had, done, uh, I had done a few acting gigs on my own. Well, when I get a role, I... Uh, how do I handle, how, how do I prepare for a role? Okay, I get the role, I read the script, read the script, read the entire thing, and then I uh, do some research, you know, go on Google and kind of figure out, especially if it is, uh, if it is specific, if the character has a specific role, like if he's a pilot or if he's a soldier or policeman, um, I kind of first have to figure out what this job entails, what, apart from the personality of the person, what his job is like, what his world is like, and then um, I watch a lot of films and I try to draw, you know, some references from the films I've watched. Lastly, I think I'd like to consider myself a very deep person. So I go into my mind, you know, and try to remember if I've seen similar things from people in my experience in life. And, you know, so I put all, all of this together and sort of like paint, you know, uh, a holistic picture of what this character should be like in my head and that's what I go with. The most challenging role I have um, played is perhaps a character called Wale in the Kofa. Kofa isn't out yet, it's going to come out sometime this year or next year. Um, just to let you into the film a bit, it's about eight characters who are locked up in a room, semi-naked, and have to figure out their way out of the room. So they're locked in a dungeon, semi-naked, four guys, four girls, in this box of a room, and they have to figure their way out. And then every 
30 minutes or so, one of them is taken out to be killed. So it's crazy. It's a race against time. And the filming of it was, was, was hectic because we were literally naked, semi-naked, in this dirty, smelly, hectic, you know, dungeon. And, you know, we had to be in character, sweaty, dirty, and it was crazy. And I played a psycho in that. So I'm, I'm losing my mind in all of that. So it was, it was emotionally and physically um, tasking. I think the new Nollywood was born out of old Nollywood and um, I'm not one of those people that like to think in two halves. I think it's one big thriving film industry but I do think um, I see some things, some traits in the film or some qualities in the film and I'm like hmm this is new or this is one of the newer works to have come out. So in the light of that, it falls into new Nollywood. I see some other films and I'm like, hmm, it looks like one of those, it has a feel of one of the older films in the industry, you know. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, it's I think Nollywood is learning fast. I think newer films that are coming out are learning the tricks of the trade and trying to um, find new ways to cut um, or to, to play around difficulties in the industry. And the industry is thriving. I think it's a beautiful place to be at this point in my life. I love featuring in drama pieces. I love drama. I think, uh, I think it brings the emotions, it brings the energy, it brings um, it brings some some level of reality. I love I love neorealism, if that means anything to you. Um, so so that's what I like. That's the space I like to play in. Um, and so yeah, so I'll, I'll easily choose drama. Daniel brings a hundred and ten percent to his performances. So you should see a movie I'm in because you're going to be sure the performance will be loud, will be great. <laughs> I think the one character that I played for me that would be evergreen would be, um, at the moment, so far, would be for Larry in Giddy Up. This is because that was my first real introduction to the industry in Nigeria and um, and, and people always make reference to it. I don't know, everywhere I go, people always go like, well, in Nigeria, people always go like, aren't you that guy from Giddy Up? I'm like, yeah, but I've done some other things, you know, but yeah, but, but that has stuck because I was a bad guy and people like, people didn't figure that I could pull that off because I have this really kind, you know, good looking face and they would go like, hmm, I never knew you had a dark side to you and I did it pretty well, I guess, so, yeah. My ultimate career goal is to make films that would impact people positively. I want to make films that would have, will have the entire theatre quiet and thinking and reflecting, you know. I want to make people cry, I want to make people laugh from from their souls, from their hearts, from their deep down in their stomachs. I want to impact my generation through storytelling. I'll tell my younger self 10 years ago to start early, to invest in my craft early, start investing in my craft early, and to not be afraid to fail and make mistakes. I ask you about love. If I wasn't acting, I would be an engineer easily, you know? Yeah, I'd be a chemical engineer if I wasn't acting. Or oh, I'd be a footballer. <laughs> I think it's a mix of both. Acting for me was first about the passion. And then I started to get paid for what I really loved to do. So I think it's about a mix of, there are some gigs I have taken just because the money was good, not necessarily because I liked the role, you know, so I just, I'm just like, okay, you pay me, I'll do it, you know. 
it, it might be a um, difficult environment to work. There's some producers, you know, you're like, mm, yeah, but you still take it because they're paying you well. You know, there are other times you're like, I'll do it because I really love the story. And I think this is a cool, cool script. <music> to get the best out of anything, you have to work hard, work really hard. I don't think, um, I mean, the one life lesson I would take from my acting career so far is to work hard at what you want to see, you know. So you have what you want to see, you have your goals, you have your ambitions, and then you're, you're, you have a starting point. Work really hard to get there. Don't think acting is a joke or some kind of fun. You know, acting is like any other job in the world. You know, it's like engineering. Work hard if you want to grow. If, if you Google my name, if you Google Daniel F. Young, because I, I'd gone to an interview before and they had Googled Daniel F. Young and they picked up stuff from the internet and they're like, oh, so how does it feel to be a 40-year-old plus athlete in Nigeria? And I'm like, uh, I'm not that person. <laughs> you know, so there is a Daniel F. Young who's, who's, who runs, who used to run for Nigeria. But my brand is Daniel Etim F. Young as the actor. And I like to say my filmmaker brand is Etim F. Young, you know, so two, I try to separate two separate brands. Daniel Etim F. Young, the actor, and Etim F. Young, the filmmaker. Well, the next big thing for the actor, Daniel Etim F. Young, is an amazing Africa Magic series coming up really soon. Um, it's called Brethren. It's going to be a daily show um, on Africa Magic. Um, uh, yeah, on African Magic. But 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 yeah, the show is going to be amazing. You must watch it. It's it's going to be big. Yeah, so that's that one. And then for the brand, Etim F. Young, the filmmaker. I'm looking at making more documentary films. Um, I'm not I'm not ready for my big feature film just yet. So what I'm working on at the moment are short films and documentary films. My documentary skin that I directed is currently doing festival festivals around the world. Um, it's a documentary on skin bleaching, on colorism in, in Nigeria and in entertainment in Nigeria. So that's that. I'm looking forward to telling more amazing, you know, social, social based stories. To have your film in a festival means that the world sees your work. So I am both honored and humbled, you know, that you can tell a story in Nigeria and people around the world would be like we find this you know um, impactful you know and so so we want a wider audience to see the film I think it's 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 important so the actress Beverly Naya came to meet me and said Daniel I want to tell a story about colorism in Nigeria you know there are lots of I, I am Beverly told me I am dark skinned and I'm, I'm thriving in my field of acting, but there are many of our colleagues who feel the need to bleach their skin because they feel um, they are seen better, they feel they have more um, agency when they look a certain way. So I want to tell a story to believe in your skin tone, no matter your shade. So I thought it was important and for me, um, the task now became how do you tell such an important story, you know, and I was able to convince her to do a documentary film. She wanted to do something else. I'm like, make a documentary. You go, the, the story will go far if it's a documentary because it's a social issue. And then the, the task now became how to thread that story and create a film out of it. So it was, it was, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience telling that story. I think acting chose me. Uh, I can't remember. Okay, so so I can't remember the first time I acted, but I do remember my child. I, I do I do have childhood memories of of fighting with myself. You know, I take two stones and I'll be like, you know. So I started to 
develop my storytelling slash acting abilities on my own. You know, I'd watch things on TV and I'd replicate it. I used to draw a lot of comics as well as a child. I'd take all my, you know, exercise books and draw stories and, you know, uh, this, there's one character I created one time called Ebba Man. And I'm just like, I'm like, guys round like Ebba. It has muscles like Ebba because he eats a lot of Ebba. You know, so stuff like that. And I, I also remember, you know, in church as a child, you know, they'd call me to act and I, and I was very active in, in, in acting in church and in school, you know. So I have, I have early memories of, you know, just throwing myself into that world. Totally bond. Oh my God, what an angel on earth just for you. Just for you could rescue you from the depths of hell. Then you wouldn't know. I would like to be remembered for helping people. You know, the world is a very amazing place to live, you know, if you open your eyes to it. Yet there are many people who still need help because they are either depressed or suffering or, you know, unfortunate in one way or the other. I would like to be that person who reached out from you know, my place of advantage to several people on the other side, you know, who have been disadvantaged in many ways to help. Hi, my name is Daniel Etim Effiong, actor and filmmaker, and that was Folio Culture.